Hey, hello everybody here and also the people who are checking in virtually. Uh, thank you for coming today. Today we have the seminar planned by Dwayne Yun Tsi. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't make it today in person, but we found Yong Chun Lee to take over on very, very short notice. Uh, so thank you for doing that. I'll, I'll let you introduce yourself and your professor. And then we're going to hear about Danzig Wolf relaxations for rank constraint optimization problems. Thank you. Please go ahead. Thanks for the nice introduction, Kevin. Yeah, as you can see clearly, I'm not Wei Jin Xie. Uh, because Doug Xie cannot make the presentation as a student and a co-author. So I'm here. We are always back up each other. And uh, I will present uh, our joint work here uh, on his behalf. And uh, the title is on Danzig Wolf Relaxation of Rank Constraint Optimization, Exactness, Rank Bounds, and Algorithms. Um, forgive me, I just learned I will present a one hour ago, so no practice at all, and I will try my best. Please feel free to interrupt me if you need a clarification or uh, uh, have any questions. Uh, okay, the first slide, motivation by life. Obviously, this is Dr. Shea's life because I don't play tennis. And in this example, we are given a tennis ball uh, you can see it's non-convex, it's not solid, it has no feeling. So if we cut in halves, uh, it's the convex hole of the intersection equal to the intersection of the convex hole. That is, uh, we cut the non-convex tennis ball into halves and we make it solid. Another option is we first make the tennis ball solid, we add the fillings and then cut in half. Uh, either option will lead to the same a half solid ball. So which means the convex hole of the intersection equal to the intersection of the convex hole. Uh, this is the question we try to answer in this talk. And how about we cut the tennis ball twice, three times, more than three times? Does the conclusion still hold? Uh, it may not. We'll answer uh, this using our results. Um, as the title suggests, we focus on the rank constraint optimization preference, and the rank constraint has become a very popular modeling component in machine learning, optimization, statistics, and etc. And uh, formally, we'll, fo uh, we'll focus on this rank constraint optimization preference that refers to RCOPT. Our RCOPT aims to minimize a linear objective function uh, over m two-sided linear matrix inequalities uh, based on a uh, rank k constant domain set x. Uh, although the linear uh, uh, our linear matrix inequalities LMI are two-sided, it can easily cover the one-sided inequalities or equations. For example, if we let the BIL, the left hand side coefficient to be negative infinite then the left-hand side constant becomes redundant. It becomes the one-sided inequality. And if we let BIL to be, uh, be equal to BIU, so the two-sided inequality becomes the equation. Our uh, rank constant is included by the domain set X. And the set X builds on the matrix space, uh, matrix space Q, and Q can den denote positive semi-definite matrix space, symmetric matrix space, and a non-symmetric matrix space. And the function FJ here can be non-convex. So we have a very general uh, framework. Uh, it can cover many interesting problems in literature. First one is the quadratically constraint quadratic program, QCQP. Here's the uh, general formulation of QCQP. If we introduce the matrix variable X in this way, you can see the matrix variable X must be rank one. So we have a rank one constraint. And so we can also reconstruct the coefficient AI in a similar way. So we can reformulate the QCQP in this formulation that fall into our rank constraint optimization framework. Linear objective function, M to study linear matrix inequalities with a domain set uh, that's uh, a solely rank one constraint. Another uh, application is the low rank 
unsupervised learning. Uh, our SLPT can cover the fair PC model that's proposed by uh, Tiny Pumpkin Patch uh, at all in 2019. Here's the model. You can clearly see it according to our SLPT fr uh, framework because it has a domain search uh, with built on rank key constraints. And uh, a similar problem that fair SVD, it builds on the non-symmetric matrix space. That is, we replace the possible sum definite by the non-symmetric data matrix. We can also reformulate the uh, fair SVD as an our RCOPT problem. Besides, our RCOPT can cover some problems in matrix completion, signal processing, experimental design, etc. Because in these problems, there are often sparsity constraints, rank constraints. And the sparsity constraint is the zero norm of a vector. It can be re easily reformulated by the rank constraint if we uh, diagonal diagonalize the vector in a matrix. So you, you can see the rank of a diagonal matrix is equal to the zero norm of a vector. So that's why the, for those uh, sparse constraint problems, it also fall into our RCOPT framework. Uh, unfortunately, in general, the RCOPT is intractable very hard to solve and even MP hard in for some problems. And here, the, this figure is an example of our domain set X. The difficulty is, is due to the non-convexity of the rank K constraint domain set. Because the domain set includes the rank K constraint is non-convex. So it's natural to convex fade to efficiently solve this problem. And in literature, uh, many work just simply drop the rank constraint or replace the rank constraint by the new clear norm constraint. Then we can obtain the convex relaxation of the RCOPT. Or we can do the best. That's given the domain set X, we find it's a convex hole. The original set X is just a surface as non-convex. And we find it's a convex hole. And replace the domain set X by its convex hole we can obtain a danziger wolf relaxation problems, DWR problem. That's we find, try to find the tightest relaxation. And the DWR as a convex relaxation is much more tractable than our original RCOPT problem. Oh, it doesn't work. Okay, so let's keep going. And so now we obtain a danziger wolf relaxation DWR for our, for our RCOPT problem. And uh, we first define the feasible set of RCOPT by the set C. As you can see, the feasible set of RCOPT is the domain set intersecting the domain set X by M to set A linear matrix inequalities. And for DWR, the only difference is here, the domain set we replace H by its convex hole. So the feasible set of DWR, uh, we refer to C real, is obtained by intersecting the convex hole of domain set X with two set A linear matrix inequalities. Given the two feasible sets C and C real, we can further simplify the RCOPT and the DWR to these two problems. As they try to minimize the same linear objective function and with the feasible size C and C real. As I mentioned before, DWR is much more tractable, it's a convex relaxation 
Unfortunately, not everything is perfect. That is, we, we know that as a convex relaxation, the autumn value variable is always less than the true autumn value of the original RCOPT problem. And the feasible side C real is larger than the convex hull of the original feasible side C. Uh, our goal is we want to understand when the DWR is equivalent to the RCOPT as a convex relaxation, it's a very ideal case. Like if we can show their equivalent, then we don't have to solve the original RCOPT problem. We can directly solve the convex relaxation. And we obtain the same optimum value, same optimum solution, and we use less computational resources because it's a convex relaxation. So we want to understand when the, the two Facebook sides they match each other. When the ultimate values, they are equal to each other. And let me formally introduce the exactness notions of the DWR, because we care about both ultimate solutions and ultimate values. So there are different notions of the DWR exactness. I will try to use this example to illustrate um, in this example, it's a two by two positive sum definite matrix and with rank, and with rank less than or equal to one. And it's off diagonal element x1, two is equal to zero, which means it's a diagonal matrix. And we want to make the rank of the diagonal matrix less than or equal to one. So we can simply project this, uh, project this set into a two dimensional vector space because it's a diagonal matrix and a two by two. Uh, here's, the, uh, here's the illustration of the domain set X in the vector space. We only care about the, the, the diagonal elements and we use the horizontal axis to denote the first diagonal element X11. Vertical axis is the second diagonal element X22. And because it's rank, the rank of X less than equal to one, which means only at the most uh, one of the diagonal elements is non-zero. So that's why the X is non-convex, it's just the non-negative axis. And here's the convex O, it's the whole non-negative O sign. Um, let me get back the our original question, that is how to define the DWR exactness. Our first exactness notion is the extreme point exactness. We want all the extreme points in set C real belong to set C. Why we care about extreme points? You can see we try to minimize a linear objective function. So the ultimate solution uh, must be obtained by some extreme points if we have the finite ultimate value. So that's why we care about the extreme points of set C real. Here's an illustration. Like if we add one cut, add one mm, linear matrix inequalities, the arrow denotes the visible region of the cut. You obtain the set C and C real in, in red color. And you see the action point exactness holds because there's only one action point A1, A1, and they have the same action point. So if the ultimate solution is obtained by some action point, then it's a perfect thing. We know that DWI is equivalent to the original problem. Second notion is the uh, convex O exactness. We want to make things more perfect. That's the C real is identical to the convex hole of the original physical set C. That's we not only care about the extreme points, we are also care about the extreme directions. Even the autumn value is not finite. We can also make sure they have the same autumn value. Here's an, another example, we add another linear matrix inequalities, up to set different set C, C real. And you can see for this set C, C real, they have the same extreme points, A1 to A3, and the convex hole of set C is identical to C real. And it's the ideal case, we have convex hole exactness. We also care about the autumn values. That's when the two problems yield the same autumn values, V opt is equal to V real. And uh, first we show the three notions of exactness, they are strongly correlated. 
at some conditions, the objective examines is equivalent to extreme point examines and commercial examines respectively. But objective examines is widely studied in which is a very interesting case because it depends on the objective function. Like uh, even the, the two feasible sides, they, are, they have very large gap. But if we will choose the objective function clear, uh, carefully, like if we let A0 to be zero, all the objective coefficients are zeros. You can see the objective exam is always holds. So that's why I say the objective exam is depends on the objective function. And uh, we also studied some objective exam is for some special families of linear objective functions. And uh, a large amount of literature has investigated the exactness uh, conditions for QCQP problem. That is, they study under what conditions the DWR of QCQP is equivalent to the original QCQP problem. And this table displays some works in this direction. And we remark, first of all, QCQP is a special case of our RCOPT. So all these conditions cannot be directly applied or extend to our problem. Second, the exactness conditions are mainly from the due space, which often requires the slated condition, some strong duality conditions. So they need some assumptions. And last, lastly, they derive the condi uh, exactness conditions for some given linear matrix inequalities, not for all. We try to understand when they are equal, when the DWR exactness holds for all, for any, um, linear, linear matrix inequalities. To fill the research gap, we do we first derive the if and only if conditions for all the three exactness notions. And our conditions go beyond the QCQP is for the general rank condition optimization problem. And so we, uh, we, and we analyze that our conditions from the do, from the primal perspective that successfully gets, gets rid of the slitter condition or other duality conditions. And our uh, exactness conditions admit geometric interpretation. Using our proposed exactness conditions, we can generalize and extend uh, some exactness results for application practicing KCKP and fair and supervised learning. This table displays some problems that we can cover using our uh, exactness conditions. Here's their exactness results. That is, they satisfy the, their DWR satisfies uh, extreme point exactness or commercial exactness. And you can see we, our exactness results are free of assumptions, but in literature, they often need the slated condition. We don't need any slated condition. And we first derive some new exactness results for these two problems. IQPT2, that's an inhomogeneous QCQP with two homogeneous quadratic constraints. And a fair SVD that, uh, uh, that's built on the non-symmetric matrix space. Because QCQP, they only focus on the possible some definite matrix space. But for fair SVD, it's based on the non-symmetric case. Okay, now let, let's move on to the extreme point exactness. To derive a, uh, the if and only if condition for the extreme point exactness. Uh, recall the physical size of the uh, RCOPT and the DWR uh, province, the physical size are C and C real. We want to show when the extreme points of size C real is uh, content by set C. The quick answer here is, it depends on no larger than M dimensional faces in commercial of X. That's uh, all Asian points in set C real belong to C if and only if any no larger than M dimensional face in commercial of X is content in X. That's our if and only if condition. And, and you can see it's independent of the M linear matrix inequalities. It's independent of those uh, 
uh, matrix coefficients AI, BI, L, BIU, it only depends on the faces in the convex hole of the domain set X. So what are faces? Uh, in this figures, the first one, the point is the zero dimensional face. And the edge is the one dimensional face. And the plane is the two dimensional face. So here's the definition of the face. Mm, and so if we want to show the extreme point exactness, that we care about the extreme points of such serial, we need to figure out what faces of uh, uh, what faces include the extreme points of uh, such serial. As we know, the such serial is obtained to the intersection side of convex whole X with M to side A linear matrix inequalities. And uh, we want to figure out what the faces in convex OX include the extreme points of set serial. The short answer is this extreme points of set serial, they lie on no larger than M two dimensional faces in convex whole of X. Let me show you, uh, well, let me show you one example to let's read this. I can still use this domain set X a uh, non-negative axis, which is convex O, non-negative O sound. Like we add uh, one cut, uh, x11 plus x22 less than equal to one. As I mentioned before, we have three extreme points, A1, A2, A3. And you can see A1 is just the origin point, it's zero, zero. So it lies on the point of the convex of X is less than a point. As I mentioned before, a point is a zero dimensional face. And for this two points, uh, it's two extreme point A to A3, they lie on the edges of the convex of X. So they lie on the one dimensional faces in convex X. In summary, all extreme points inside serial lie on the point edges in convex of X. When, uh, and uh, when there is only one linear matrix inequalities. And this conclusion holds for any M linear matrix inequalities. So that's why let me add another one uh, cut, different cut. We obtain this extreme point A1. And A1 is simply the point as the origin of the non-negative awesome. So it's around the zero dimensional face in convex of X. Um, so we, we, um, and in the example, we show that if there's only one constraint, when we know the extreme points of set serial, they lie on the less than or equal to one dimensional faces in convex of X. What if we generalize it to M matrix inequalities? The conclusion still holds as uh, the extreme point of the intersection side serial is always contained in a no larger than M dimensional phase in convex whole of X. Now, let's, uh, given this uh, result, that we know the locations of uh, extreme points of side serial, how to, how to derive the if and only if condition of the extreme point exactness. As I mentioned before, now we know the, uh, for any extreme point Y in size serial, we, we know its location. We know it belongs to no larger than M dimensional faces in convex of X. And in this condition, we know any no larger than M dimensional face in convex of X is contained in X. So we can show the X, the extreme point Y belongs to the domain, original domain set X. And, uh, why it belongs to serial, so it satisfies those uh, M linear matrix inequalities. Then we can show the Y belongs to the original physical set C. So we have the extreme point exactness. The key here is if we know the, direct, uh, the locations of the extreme point Y, and we guarantee those uh, locations are content in the original domain set X, then we can guarantee this extreme point is also content by the original Facebook site.
And the necessity is can be proven by contradiction, but due to time limit, it's omitted here. Let me go back to the uh, the previous example to uh, show why our condition can be used to show the action point exactness. I think given the domain set X and its convex hole, you can clearly see any no larger than one dimensional face in convex hole X is contained in the original domain set X because this point, it belongs to the domain set X as a zero dimensional face. For these two edges, they are one dimensional faces and they also belong to the original set X. So that's why for this domain set X, we can conclude any no larger than one dimensional face in the convex hull is contained by H. And uh, using our previous if and only if condition, as in if the no larger than one dimensional face, then we can prove the extreme point exactness when m is equal to one. Go back to this example, we only add one linear matrix inequalities. So obviously the green point exam is must hold. And you can see the conclusion is true. And the A1, A2, A3 indeed belong to the original physical set C. Uh, the geometric interpretation of our if and only for condition is in, first of all, we forgot the locations of the extreme points in set C real. And so the second step, our condition guarantees these locations uh, belong to the original baseball set C. Then the, in the all the extreme points in the set C real will belong to the set C. Uh, here's the application of our examiner's condition to QCKP. As in, uh, we know the QCKP, the domain set, as mentioned before, is a solely rank one constraint in the n times n possible some definite metric space. Uh, let me show you a simple example. When n equal to two, and uh, here's the domain set x, when n equal to two for QCKP. It's non-convex, it's just a three-dimensional surface. And it's a convex hole, uh, it's, uh, it's solid, it has feeling, as you can see. So, uh, and uh, in this example, for this convex hole x, the, the zero-dimensional phase is just this one point. It belongs to x. And for the other edges, and they also belong to the original physical set x. So we can conclude any no larger than two-dimensional phase of the convex hole x belong to the original, phase, original domain set x. And this result holds for any n times n matrix space size. That is for QCQP, we can show any no larger than two dimensional phase of the convex so X is contained in X. And using our if and if condition, we can prove for QCQP as a DWR attains extreme point examination whenever there are no larger than two uh, linear matrix inequalities. I wish you enable us to cover the exactness results for this preference with one or two quadratic constraints. So um, well now let's talk about the convex hole exactness. First, first I want to explain why the convex hole exactness is stronger than the extreme point exactness by using this simple example. Now we obtain the set C serial, and we you can see that's only one extreme point A1, and the set C serial, uh, they, uh, they share the same extreme point. So the extreme point exactness holds. Unfortunately, the convex hole exactness does not because the, now the set C is convex and the convex of set C is it itself. It's not equal to the set C real. So, the, so that's why I see the convex of exactness is stronger than extreme point exactness. So our previous if and only if condition for extreme point uh, exactness doesn't hold for convex of exactness. We need stronger condition for convex of exactness. 
um, the difference, main difference of Kamakso examination and extreme point examination is Kamakso relies on the extreme directions. And, uh, let's, uh, and in the previous analysis, let's, uh, we first, uh, we first, uh, first describe the locations of extreme points inside serial. So similarly, we first figure out what faces are uh, extreme directions outside serial located. The answer is uh, they lie on no larger than m plus one dimensional phase of the research cone of a complex X. The, um, for the extreme points, it relies on no larger than m dimensional phases. But for extreme direction, it relies on M plus one dimensional phases. So like we have more strict condition, uh, compare, uh, M plus one phase compared to the previous M dimensional phase. Still in this example, you can see there's uh, two directions, F1, F2. And for F1, it belongs to the, the plan of the, of the complex of X is the, because the complex of X is a non-negative ocean. And you can see F1 is, is lies on the plan and the plan is the two dimensional phase. So that's why we can claim the, the dimensional phases F1, F2, they lie on the edges and prime in the non-negative ocean. They belong to uh, the no larger than two dimensional phases. And so using this and we show this result holds for any um, linear matrix inequalities. Um, and so we show when the domain set is conic and pointed, the Kamakso examines holds if and only if any no larger than two M plus one dimensional phase in Kamakso whole X is contained in X. Uh, which provides uh, some examples results for KCQP, but homogeneous KCQP with only one quadratic constant. We can prove the common so examples holds. But for KC, homogeneous KCQP with two quadratic constants, we can prove the extreme point examples. But for common so examples, it reduced to only one quadratic constant, which is because of the difference of our if and only if condition. Because one condition is relies on the no larger than m dimensional phase. For convex examples, it relies on no larger than m plus one dimensional phase. Um, okay. Finally, we are, we are done with the examples conditions. Uh, but uh, I didn't finish the objective examples. It, uh, uh, we only discussed the convex examples and the extreme point examples. And the uh, objective examples, the uh the objective analysis is strongly correlated with this two notion of examples. So that's why we uh, skip here. And the main idea is similar, but for objective examples, we can derive we can further derive some uh, relaxed uh, if and only for conditions. But now it's time to discuss what if the examples doesn't hold. In most cases, we know the complex relaxation is different from the original problem. That's, that may be a huge research gap, a huge theoretical gap between the original problem and its complex relaxation. So beyond the examples, can we prove the theoretical gap between these two problems? Can we guarantee the theoretical performance of the complex relaxation problem? Um, because here's our Facebook size C serial for RCOPD and SDWR. In general, these two physical sets are not equal, and they don't uh, they don't achieve any notion of exactness. And uh, to theoretically guarantee the DWR performance, we derive the upper bounds for the largest rank for all extreme points in set serial. Like if we know the extreme point exactness holds, the largest rank of all extreme points is just the rank key, because the original problem is the rank key constant. But if we can prove the upper bound of for the largest rank, we cannot theoretically guarantee the solution quality of the DWR problem. And this bound can be very useful for developing efficient approximation algorithms. 
and in literature, like if we know the bounds, we can derive the approximation algorithms with this radical guarantee. And our main contribution on this uh, part is we derive the upper bound for the largest rank of extreme parts in such a rule. And the upper bound is uh, uh, can be written as k plus o, o squared m. So you can see it's independent of the number of complex spectral function t. In the domain such, uh, no matter how many functions on complex spectral functions we have, the bound always holds. And in literature, we only provide the rank bound for two special cases, KCKP and FIPC. For KCKP, t is equal to zero. For FIPC, t equal to one. And they prove the same, same rank bound. But our contribution is for any t, no matter the t is how large it can be, the bound is still the same. And this rank bound can uh, further provide sufficient conditions for extreme high examiners. So which part of J and oh. oh yeah, here we, yeah, very good catch. Here we assume the function f j x is convex and spectral. So the spectral function means the function only depends on the in-game values or singular values of matrix x. So lambda x here knows the in-game values or singular values of matrix s. So that's all can uh, write it in this way. And uh, we know the domain such of QCQP, FIPC, both of them are the spectral domain such. Because for FIPC, the t equal to one and the function fjx is the uh, is the largest in value. So it also depends on the in value. It's a spectral domain such. And the spectral domain set is uh, it's widely used in literature. Like uh, if we consider the a uh, nuclear now, log determinant, and uh, the sum of k largest in value, all these functions are spectral functions. They only depend on the in values. So given the spectral domain such, uh, first of all, we need to figure out what's the explicit characterization of such a real. How to derive the convex of x and then if for general rank k domains, a rank k constant domain set, driving is convex whole is already NP hard. So that's why we only consider the domain set that consists of the spectral functions. And we show for this type of domain set, it's possible to derive its convex whole. Um, let me give you a brief idea. Why the spectral domain set can have the explicit explicit convex hole? That is, it only depends on the in game values. It's a permutation invariant with in game values. Like the rank constraint is actually the zero norm of the in game values. The sum of non zero in game values is just the rank constraint. And it, and there's permutation invariant with in game values. So for any permutation of angle values, the number of non-zero angle values is always the same. So it's a permutation environment with lambda x and all of these functions is a permutation environment with lambda x. Then the spectral domain set is a permutation environment with angle values is a symmetric set. Here's an example. We show in this example, the angle value set can be written in this way. As I mentioned before, the zero norm of in values is just the rank constraint. And it, uh, uh, for any permutation, we obtain the same zero norm. And um, in this example, uh, we consider the one norm of in values. It's also permutation invariant for, uh, for the in values. Yes. Uh, for this case, if the matrix is symmetric, lambda x denotes the in-game values. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, it's just a vector. And, uh, no, I mean, I mean, this set is just the set for eigenvalues. Like we can decompose the matrix variable into the eigenvector eigen space and the eigenvalue space. Oh yeah, that's true. So that's why I can. Yeah, that's a very good question. So that's why the that's the special setting of the spectral function, because the spectral function it only depends on eigenvalues. values, and we know we don't know the sorting of eigenvalues. values. It has any order. So that's why we say the symmetric function must be permutation invariant. So that's why we can have a well-defined uh, function fj. Like uh, for the spectral function trace, it's, it's, it can be a spectral function because no matter the eigenvalues are given in any order, in any permutation, fj lambda x is unique, the trace is unique. So that's why we need the spectral functions because it's a permutation environment with lambda x. I didn't put it put it here, but I think in some well-known work that they prove any spectral function must be permutation environment with angle values. Yeah, that, that I think that's the key part of the spectral domain set. So uh, here's the uh, uh, the eigenvalue such for this case for this uh, example. You can see it's symmetric. No matter uh, you permute the uh, entrance in lambda x, the set is the same. And given the this assumption, that is the uh, spectral domain set. We can prove it's the convex hole equal to the projection of the set of y over matrix X. Here's the uh, explicit uh, description of set y. And um, here we need the majorization constraint. And the majorization constraint is some definite representable, um, that which is proven by Bantel and Nimirovsky in 2001. And given the uh, given the convex of x, we know the explicit characterization. We can provide the explicit characterization of such a real because it's just the intersection of this uh, convex of x with n to set a linear matrix inequalities. Now we can prove the rank bound. We show if Q denotes the positive semi definite matrix space. And R is the largest rank of all extreme points in such serial. And we can prove the R star is bounded by this K plus this one. First one we see is almost linear in the square root of 2i, the, the rank gap. And it's independent of the number of convex spectral functions, that is the T. So you can add as many spectral functions you want to tighten the domain set to find the tightest convex relaxation. And the rank bound is still the same. Uh, the uh, set product is if we uh, force us, uh, if we force the upper bound to be k, like uh, r star less than or equal to k, and we now we have the extreme point examination. All extreme points, they have the rank at most a k. So we have extreme point examiners. A set product is when m less than or equal to one, we know the, the upper bound is equal to k. So r star equal to k, we have extreme point examiners. It contributes to the examiners conditions for uh, extreme point examiners. And the proof, uh, proof I did is yes, we first describe the convex hole and then prove the uh, prove this bound by contradiction. 
Here's a summary of the rank bounds for different metric space. Okay, I mentioned mention the possible some definite metric space, but for symmetric space, um, we need the function, spectral function, is a sign invariant. Um, here's x is just the absolute vector of x. We take absolute value for each element in x. If this function is a sign invariant, we obtain the same rank bound as that of our passive sum definite matrix space. But if without the sum invariant assumption, the bound reduced to like a, 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 the bound gets worse. It's almost linear with a, a square root of 4m. And if most, um, the most surprising part is for the non symmetrical case, it achieves the best low rank bound. It's only linear in the square root of m. Mm, now let's move on to the last part. How to solve the DWR? Like we know the DWR can have the very good performance, can be equivalent to the original problem. We can know it cannot be very far away from the original problem, but we still didn't solve it. Um, first, given the uh, given the spectral domain set X, we know it's a convex or of X. So we can directly solve the DWR because it's a convex relaxation problem. The convex of X is a SDP relaxation, but the cost is very expensive to formulate the convex of X. As you can see, it builds on the extended space. We introduce another variables and it will need to formulate the materialization constraint. So the first option is not a good option. That's we directly use some uh, solvers like mosaic to solve the DWR because we know it's a convex hole. We know the formulation of the convex of X, but it's very computational expensive. You will see you will see it in the numerical study later. And another option is we can use the column generation algorithm. This is the dynamic of relaxation problem. It's natural to use the column generation, but the preference is now the attitude duration. We need to solve this pricing problem. Lin linear objective function of the convex of x. But like I mentioned before, formulating convex of x is expensive. We don't want to solve the pricing problem directly. Mm, alternatively, we show the pricing problem can be very easily solved. And for some cases, it even admits the closed form solution. Uh, here we show if we want to, uh, the optimal solution of the pricing problem is, is equal to this way. And we only need to compute the lambda star. And the, to solve the lambda star, it's just a vector based convex optimization problem. It's easy to solve. And we, this theorem displays the uh, result for the possible same definite matrix space from symmetric, non symmetric matrix space. We can obtain the same result. The pricing problem is also a simple convex program. And in the numerical study, we try to compare the three methods we mentioned before. First of all, we use the mosaic to solve it directly, which requires the uh, formulation of a convex or of x. Or the naive column generation method, that's why we still need the convex or of x. Oh, we use our proposed column generation problem. Uh, we simply re uh, uh, reduce it to a vector based optimization problem. It's a convex program, and we uh, don't have to formulate the convex of x. The first application is the MIMO network. And uh, in literature, they uh, propose an RCOPT type model with the domain setting in this way. You can see. The, these two functions, log determinant, only depends on the eigen values of x. The trace also depends on the eigen values. So this is a domain set is a spectral domain set. Uh, this table summarizes the numerical performance of the numerical comparison of these three methods. The first column uh, denotes the different parameters. N is the matrix, the dimension of the matrix space. And key is the rank constraint. Like, uh, for this one, we, rank, we add a uh, rank 50 constraint. And uh, M denotes the number of linear matrix inequalities. 
I for this two columns, it displays the running time and the rank of the items of the output dissolution. Um, from this column, this column, this column, compare them, you can see our purpose column generation runs very fast. The running time is just one second. But for some cases, these two methods cannot salvage within one hour. The dash line means in this case cannot be solved within one hour. But our purpose method just takes one second or 30 seconds. Another application is the QCQP optimal power flow problem. But optimal power flow, as I mentioned before, is just the rank one constraint. So K is always equal to one. Here we have the larger scale N and with different K, oh, the K is always equal to one. So we cannot change K. There's a different number of linear matrix in the quartets. Um, Again, the our proposed column generation is quite scalable. For large scale cases, it can salvage uh, in one thousand within one thousand seconds. But for the other two methods, they cannot solve the large scale cases within one hour. It's a summary. Let's say we propose a rank constant optimization problem RCOPT that admits a high degree of flexibility. It can cover many problems in literature. And uh, first of all. We derive the if and only for condition to show when the relaxation DWR is equivalent to the original RCOPT. And if and beyond the exactness, if the DWR is not exact, we show the theoretical guarantee of its performance. And finally, we salvage using a column generation algorithm with a, um, with a much more tractable pricing problem. So uh, that's all for today. And the part of our work is uh, uh, available online. Please feel free to reach out or email me if you have any questions. Thank you for your listening. I'm happy to take any questions. Hey, um, when you have bounds on the rank, how do these compare to the Pataki bounds on the low rank solutions to SDP problems? So when, when I give you an SDP with M linear matrix inequalities, mm -hmm. there's a bound that says there exists a low rank solution to that SDP problem, where the bound, the, the square, the rank square is smaller than the number of inequalities that you have. Oh. which I feel would give you a stronger bound than the one that you end up with. Um, which case? So if you have a, um, an SDP problem, oh, so SN plus, mm -hmm. if you have the SDP problem with M linear matrix inequalities, then there exists a solution whose rank R is such that R times R plus one divided by two is more than M. Yes. Which would give you something um, that is yeah, uniformly sense. bounded by square root of M. Yeah, exactly. That's why I only play the rank bound for the general case. But in fact, we can further, we can further improve the rank bound. Like uh, for, for the case you mentioned before, the, T, the R, R plus one less than equal to two M, the T is equal to zero. There's no spectral constraints, only rank one constraint. And uh, we, we can also further improve the rank bound. But here, this plate for the general case, the, the rank bound you mentioned is for the special case. Like we give a specific domain set, we can derive this, you can derive this rank bound. Follow-up question. Mm -hmm. When you have only one or two matrix inequalities, uh, linear matrix inequalities, then you automatically get that there's a solution of rank at most one. Uh, yes. And then doesn't that derive a lot of the results that you have in the SDP case uh, where you only have one or two matrix inequalities, linear matrix inequalities? Mm -hmm. uh, you mean so the, the, the thing being, if there's a solution, if your original problem, you relax the rank, you obtain an SDP problem. Mm -hmm. 
and then you apply the Pataki bound and you know that that, that SDP problem has an optimal solution of rank one. Yes. Then automatically the density growth uh, relaxation is going to give you a tight bound. Yes. Because the SDP has an optimal solution that it also would also solve the, the density growth. Yeah, and even in our numerical study, you can see the final rank of the solution is rank one. So it's equal to the original problem. And um, I think the, the case you mentioned is just for some special case when there's only one or two constraints. As you mentioned, but the last thing I want to mention, I will call it the identical relax relaxation. DWR is not the semi-definite relaxation because for SDP, you just uh, replace X by S plus N, the whole semi-definite feasible set. But here is the case, like uh, it's also a QCQP problem. But now we let the domain set uh, in this way. Let's we can add the spectral constraints. We can add the spectral functions. Then we can first tighten the 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 uh, so it's tighter than the SDP relaxation because in SDP we just uh, drop the rank constant, but here it's uh, it's different. So the, the SDP cone is rank one generated. So if you take the convex hull of the rank constraint, unless you have one of your linear matrix inequality that effectively push you onto a face, mm -hmm. you're always going to get the same thing as the SDP. Yes. Only one constraint. Which, which is why you have that the X and the convex hull of S is the same. You just drop the rank constraint. Uh, yeah, that, I, I'm going to ask you to take the remainder of that offline for sake of time. Let's thank our speaker one more time. And then people who want to ask questions can stick around for a bit. Also the people listening from home. Thank you.